Hello Year 10s, um, so this is our last task this um, half term and what I'd like you to do is produce a critical study on Lucy Crick. So what I'm going to show you today is the A4 copy of one of her pieces of work which um, I'm going to show you with colour and pencils and I've also attached the writing element to the study of Lucy Crick as well, the A01 structure strip with sentence starters to kind of get you started. And what I would like for the um, first week after half term is you to then have completed your copy and the writing which you've typed up or written neatly so that when we get back to school, we're ready then just to present it. Now I have got a selection of her images and I've also attached the PowerPoint, a few of them that are large so that you can print them out or work from them on your screen, up to you. But obviously if you don't like any of the images that I've got here of her work, by all means just look it up and choose a piece of your own. Um, what I would say is that um, I would like it to be a four in size. Now obviously I think I'm gonna go for this image here so i'm going to move my paper landscape if you choose one of these images by all means do it a4 and um, portrait but again don't try and make it fit into a um, a4 piece of paper you know it's going to be a4 in size but do it as a square because it is a square don't try and move the proportions to fit the paper you cut the paper to fit that okay so um i'm going to choose this piece here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move my paper into landscape and I'm first my initial thing is just to sketch out my different elements within the picture so um, I'm going to start with the ellipses of the teacup so I'm going to start with this bit up here so just kind of making it roughly about this size and then bring it down. Now, as you're doing your proportions, like I said, it's not worrying about any of the detail or anything like that. We are simply just getting everything in to making sure we kind of get the size, the proportions correct. And then it's then going from there where we will add the detail and the coloring later, okay? So it's bringing that around. And bringing that around in here okay bringing that in and that into here and then i'm going to have my little handle just coming off the edge and around so again it's just kind of looking at those shapes and just trying to making it that we're drawing everything to kind of fit it and to get it in correctly Okay, so that would come into there. So bring that one in around there and bring that one in there. So it's almost like a little bent C kind of shape and then you can add those other bits in and then that comes in and then that comes in there and then that comes down off of the cup. Okay, and I bring that cup in and bring that cup in just to kind of give it a little bit and then down and around, okay. So, once you've done that and you're kind of putting it in, just make sure you're shoring it up, just roughly getting everything in that you want. And the shapes. The curl, that in around there, and then bring that one in around there. And making sure that curve fits that curve so I can see it doesn't. So I'm just going to rub that one out and bring it more around like so. Okay. Then I can start just to look at that. And I'm not going to press draw that bit line around in here because um, it's going to, it's really, really dark. So I'm going to make sure just kind of roughly put that bit in there and actually I'm just going to put my dolly mixture shapes in that will be kind of in front of it and again you can see here I'm not putting any of the detail in I'm simply looking at the shapes of the sweets so you can see my mouse here has got that kind of cone shape and then I'm just building those up and he's got his little bottom coming up around in here 
and then coming in around so his nose is just going to be that bit smaller and around like so okay and then I've got these ice gems bringing it in and then I've got that little French fancy where I'm just going to kind of put him about round in here and just curve him in so he's got the little bit at the top and then he comes down it's like a cake shape like so and then I've got that lovely wrapper where it kind of almost comes round and a bit like so and then he's going to go behind my French fancies and then I can just very quickly just kind of help me know that they're going to go in and around like so okay so you can see I've simply just sketched in just to get those initial shapes of where everything's going to go all right okay I'm just going to move that one just a little bit closer like so, which moves him as well. Okay, so once you're happy with your sketch, you then just want to shore it up to make sure you've got everything. So I'm just looking at that teacup and it's got a little bit of a wave that then comes off and around in here. And I'm going to put that paper so it just goes off and around in here that means I can get rid of those sketch lines and so and that little bit of that middle bit where it curves it down and around okay get rid of those little lines in here put the T just in the middle and then that gold rim that can go around it again just make sure that curve emphasizes it going around and then you've got those bits coming off and around I'm just going to bring that one into here and that one into there okay so once you've done those kind of elements you can then start to add in a little bit more of kind of your coloring so with your colouring, you're going to build it up a bit like we did with the um, title page. It's building it up a bit of a um, like a pizza with your layers. So I'm going to put my white on first. And when I colour, I'm going to colour in this direction to emphasise my cup and it being a cylinder. So I'm colouring around like so. And just looking at where my highlighted areas are. Ah, then I can get my blue and I can start to then looking again so I'm leaving that little bit of that area that's white bringing that down and again just gonna bring down that for my edge and then I can press down nice and hard and start to color in the direction of the cup now my cup that I've chosen is almost like a turquoisey blue. I don't own a turquoisey blue, so I know I'm not going to get the colour completely right. But what I do have is I do have a bit of a green. So I'm going to then just to show those lighter tones is I'm just going to start to put in a bit of that green as well on top of the, with the white here. And so those reflective, those lighter areas, such as these bits, put in a bit of the green, bit of the white, so that when I go over as well with my blue, I'm kind of showing that understanding that when the light, there'll be more colours within it and not just one solid blue. OK, so it's kind of showing that understanding. So again, I'm colouring those bits in, get a bit of the black, because again, going to be darker in around in here bringing this in around in here building that up 
and building this up. Okay, so again, it's looking at those, showing that you understand it's going to be darker and moving it around. Again, going back to my blue, going on top to really modulate it and blend it back in. Okay, it's not just something that you're colouring in one solid colour. We're building up your different colours, building up your different tones and showing that understanding that is also going to be 3D. So for example, around here, it's very, very light. So I'm going to put a bit of the white to blend it in on here. And then I'm going to bring that around in here. So get my blue on there. Use my white again, blend it in, get a bit of my light green where it's that kind of really highlighted bit here. So I'm just doing the green where to show that it's lighter. Okay, and get my blue in around. Build those bits up with my blue again. Building it up, so colouring those bits in. And then, so I just get my blue as my base. And then again, go to my black now, because you can see here, there's those shadow bits. So it's about now looking at those shadow bits and starting to put those bits in. So where it's going to be the darker bits of building it up and building it in. Okay. And showing that understanding again, that you know that that's going to be the darker bits and start to then work over the top with those. And you can push it back to blend it more in so it's not like so dark with your blue but you're starting to show and build it up, really make it look as if it's going round with your pencil colours, okay? Now what you've got on top here is you've almost got that rim, so you have that kind of bluey, goldy, black rim with that white highlight. So I'm just gonna use my pencil to build that in and around there, and obviously, the background is going to be quite dark, so I'm just starting just to use that to push that cup forward. So you can see this is the start of the background, but I'm just using it to help me for when I do the inside of the cup and also that kind of line where it's not absolutely perfect. It's almost got like a little of a wriggle to it. Okay, and you can see then by pushing that back, you kind of making the cup come forward a bit more. And you can then use that as a way as you're coloring just to kind of get those lines, especially with the white areas to help you to show, right, do I need a bit more? Where is it gonna be, etc. Then on here, it's white, but it's not white. So you've got, you need your white, your black, your gray, just to build it all up. So I'm gonna put a bit of my white on. I'm just gonna get rid of that line there first. Okay, so I'm just gonna build my white on around in here and a white on around in here. And then I've got my black where I can then just start to put in and again, help emphasize and show that it's curved around, okay? To help emphasize and show that you understand that there is darker areas and also that that does by helping make it show that that cup is curved and it does go around, okay? So it is gonna be kind of a little bit darker in around in here. And then we can use our brown 
within here for our line. We also have a little bit of the yellow within it because it's that goldy colour. If you've got a goldy brown, by all means use it. I am using what I've got. So that comes in. Then we've got our lovely tea. So again, we know that's going to be your yellows, your browns, your blacks. So I can start to build and look at where's the darker areas, where's the lighter areas. Use my black just, just to emphasize again that that tea's in the cup. So I can kind of emphasize where that highlight is, but also where it's going to be darker just to show that the tea's in it. And you can see we're starting just to build it all forward. Okay, so again, down here would be similar to up here with your whites, your greys, and the blues again will be the same here for the inside. I show you here. Okay, again, if you're coloring in this bit, you're coloring around to emphasize that it's going around and it's also kind of at an angle. So think about the way that you're coloring. If you color this and you're coloring like this, you're not going to help show that shape and help show that 3D. Everything they do, say, for example, a saucer, your shapes is here. So you want to colour in that direction. You want to be colouring around it like so. And that will then, again, help emphasise that shape and that understanding that something's going around and in. So that's kind of your teacup. Now, when it comes to kind of just going to show you a little bit of each of these, is with, like, your little pig, again... When you colour, we need to show that shape. So it's like a cone, isn't it? So you can see I'm just showing off and around the cone. Now, I don't own a pink, but I have got a red. So my little ice mouse is going to be a, a ready mouse. But I am going to use a bit of white and I'm also going to use a bit of yellow just to kind of bring it in and bring it around. Obviously, if you've got pink, please by all means use your pink. But if you haven't, like me, use the closest color that you have got that you can then use within it because it's just about making sure that you understand that kind of coloring and just bringing it in and around, okay? So again, that bit here is darker, that bit here is darker. I'm just gonna then get my white just to show that understanding, I understand that that is a bit of yellow as well. And then I can go back and put in those little bit of those highlights and use my black as a way of kind of really emphasizing that I definitely do understand where those kind of shapes and elements are gonna be, okay? So you can see we're starting to kind of just build it up and again behind here will be darker, which I can then push back with my red and make that very much darker on here. So that everything just kind of almost falls in and around it like so okay again with your um uh dolly mixture i'm just looking at the shape of that it needs to come down in here is again so you've got your black area in the middle so i can put that in and then again with your dolly mixture you've got your yellows your oranges and maybe even a tiny bit of red in there if you have it just to start to build it up and to show those different colors. Nothing is ever just one color. Think about your color wheel and think about how they all kind of make each other and can blend to help show those different colors and those different tones within it. Okay, it's not, I don't want to just a one colored in dolly mixture. You should be kind of building it up, showing that understanding of those tones and then building it up. I might use a bit of brown. Just kind of then, again, again, I'm coloring it in, into that kind of direction to emphasize where it is and that kind of round shape, all right? Again, with this one in here would be your whites and your grays, okay? When it comes to your 
um, French Fancy. You've got your pinks, but more importantly, so this would all be your pinks with your whites or mine, my reds and my whites and a little bit of black. When you're doing this one, you're going to want to use your pinks still within this element here with your black. So it's almost showing, because if you see, you can see that coming through. So that's quite important that you then start to build those within it and show that you understand that it is a clear kind of point and you're starting to kind of almost layer it up so that when you then add in your other elements, it's that understanding that one, it's that texture, it's that movement, but also that you would then see those colours of that French fancy within that one there as well, okay? So it's just about how you're starting to build it up to show kind of that understanding that those colours within your French fancy here, so it'll be my reds and my whites, and where the kind of white areas would be, would then also be within the French Fancy packet itself. Okay, all right. So it is just really looking at and thinking about your colours. Now, once you've done all of that with your background, all of her backgrounds, which makes it so stand out, is how dark it is. So first thing I would do is I would kind of sketch in whereabouts you're going to cut it. Again, unless you've got a guillotine at home, please, please save this till the end. But you can sketch it in, as I've done here, where your background is. And then it is about colouring that in black. Now... This is where, by the, this point, you might be very, very tired. Your hand might be very tired. You don't want to then ruin all of this beautiful work that you've done by then doing this in the background. Take a break, take a breather, come back, because you need it to be making sure it's really pressed down hard. You can't see your pencil kind of lines, because that then will finish it off by really pushing, you know, that piece of lovely drawing forward and those lovely shapes and those colours that you have created. Now when it comes down into this point here, so for example my little saucer, you do want to make sure, so mine's got a bit of brown in and everything because it's darker, you do want to make sure you've got those elements in. So it's almost like the hint of showing where it is by the colours and the tones that you've put in. All right, and then it's then again using that black. You can see my pencil needs a sharpen because it's starting to actually cut into the, the um, paper. And if that happens, you will actually scratch the paper and then you won't, you won't actually be able to resolve that. So please, a sharp pencil is absolutely necessary. But you can see here that you can use those browns within it because I can see that here at that point there very softly and then down at the front it then almost blends into brown at the front here now my brown's quite dark so I'm almost going to do like a layered brown effect where I have the brown but then I'm going to go back over just with some areas just so it's not really really bright and you can see here with my black because otherwise I think it would take away from the picture itself. So it's almost going to blend, modulate into the black, into the brown for the front area. So that is what I would like you to do for your copy of Lucy Crick. And like I've said, I've given, it's the last task for this half term. And what I'm going to do is I will put all these images and this demo all onto um, Teams for you. The writing um, helps um, AO1 structure strip onto Teams as well. And then I also put on a checklist um, just of what everything you should have completed this half term so that when you come back after half term, hopefully have a really nice body of work ready for next half term's work. Because unfortunately, I don't believe you're going to be back straight away. 
Okay, so any questions, any queries, please, please email me, message me through Teams. Um, but you are all doing brilliantly well and I look forward to these copies, Critical Studies finished. Thank you very much for your attends and I will see you soon.